Today we'll be talking about a topic and set of mechanics or traits in game if you want to call them that that I've tried to stay away from for a very very long time and the reason is because I didn't feel there was any actual way in game despite having my assumptions I didn't have any way in game to quantify these things and actually tangibly prove them and to me I don't want to make videos about assumptions I want to be showing fact most of the time unless of course it's just a discussion. So today we'll be talking about accuracy, range, stability, and aim assist and how those things actually work together, what they actually mean, and how they affect the performance of your weapon. Part of me has wanted to finally make this video as well because quite frankly I see a lot of discussion now about aim assist in Destiny 2 and to be honest, a lot of what I believe are inaccurate assumptions and false statements or rumors being made and potentially taken as fact. So this is my attempt to clear up some of that information using what we know and what's been confirmed in the past and applying it to Destiny 2. This is my very best attempt to explain these things, explain how it works, and to the best of my knowledge, how I understand it to work using the work and examples of people before me. However, these again still will include some of my own slight assumptions as to how they work. And again, I am not a developer, so I will never truly know exactly the definitive answers behind how these things work and what they affect. But again, that's just a disclaimer. I'm going to start just by giving some footnotes on how John Wisniewski described accuracy and all these different stats. This was from Crucible Playbook episode 16 from Destiny 1 and if you don't know already John Wisniewski was one of the ex lead sandbox designers for Bungie and I assumed has a lot of these systems that were put in place and had control of those systems so he explained it in this episode. Any material that I do mention will be available in the description as a link. So in point form pertaining to accuracy, aim assist is buried in the range stat. Range is visualized as a cone that radiates out from the barrel of the gun. The better the range, the further out your cone goes and the narrower it is. And within that cone, everything that is accuracy and aim assist are defined, as well as of course more obvious things like damage fall off, start and stop. Accuracy is part of the range cone. There is initial accuracy and final accuracy. Every gun starts with a smaller initial accuracy as he describes, or I believe he means tighter, and after firing blooms out. There is a decay time for that cone to reset and for that accuracy to return back to initial. And firing again before resetting to initial accuracy will cause it to bloom out again further until a certain point. Initial accuracy on most weapons tends to be quote unquote pretty tight and meant to make it so your first shot on target is going to hit the majority of the time. John mentioned that every weapon archetype has a band of accuracy values that exist within a band of range values. So he gave an example that if a weapon has a range stat of 40, it has an accuracy of X. Range, accuracy, and aim assist are all incorporated to one another. Target acquisition is the keyword of what aim assist means or the aim assist setting in your range bar in Destiny 2. Just to very quickly note, aim assist is a term to describe both friction as well as bullet magnetism, but more on that later. Things that improve accuracy or aim assist are touching that portion of the range value without altering other aspects of range. And a direct quote from John is that if your range is higher, your aim assist is going to be better. So to recap my understanding of how this works, Range dictates your accuracy cone, the distance of it, and how narrow or wide it is. The accuracy cone is the area a bullet can deviate or deflect within the cone over distance, also referred to as the quote unquote error angle. There is also initial accuracy and final accuracy, aka or better known as bloom to the community I suppose. Projectile accuracy is the likelihood of a bullet taking a centered path or receiving max aim assist deflection, meaning aim assist altering the course of the bullet. Initial projectile accuracy decreases after sustained fire or firing in the air, also in combination of course with the way the accuracy cone changes as well. 
Initial accuracy is generally tight, again as described by John, and it's meant to allow you to hit your first shot on target reliably. I believe this means a tighter cone while ADS and high projectile accuracy, but of course, blooms out after each repeated shot until a given point, and there's that decay time for the bloom effect to return to initial accuracy. Hand cannons, of course, are a good example of a weapon with a tight initial projectile accuracy and a wide accuracy cone. Aim assist, or target acquisition as it's called in Destiny, is tied to range and is the margin of error each bullet allows, where a bullet will deflect or alter its path if it's within that margin of error. I do also believe that higher accuracy could potentially counteract flinch with a better chance for bullets to go straight and the best chance for aim assist to take effect. I think that in theory it sounds like it's wood, but again this isn't definitive, it's just my assumption and this is very hard to quantify in any way. That is the best way I understand how these stats go together and work. Let's talk more about aim assist though. There are two main parts to aim assist, there's magnetism and friction. According to the Halopedia page, magnetism defines and outlines how far a bullet will quote unquote bend in order to hit an enemy. Bullets and projectiles do not necessarily travel in a straight path. They will curve very slightly in order to hit a target. Different projectiles will experience different curvatures. And friction slows the player's turn rate as soon as their reticle passes over an enemy. What it does is that it slows the player's top speed and then dramatically decreases the rate at which the crosshair will slow down when the player releases the stick. This is the main thing that people associate what aim assist is, of course mainly pertaining and only pertaining to controller. I believe that aim assist enhancing perks in Destiny 2 are not altering reticle stickiness as I've never really felt this to be any different as a result and I believe they only alter the bullet magnetism portion. Range, however, is the portion that tends to directly affect friction as this is very obviously felt when attempting to use something like a sidearm with low range against a longer range target or a low range hand cannon versus a higher range hand cannon. Although of course range does affect the magnetism as well. A friend of mine made a video showing and talking about how aim assist works in Halo 1. Of course you can see that full video in the description as you can all the resources. And as we see in Halo 1 it uses what appears to be a very similar aim assist structure or system to Destiny. And we can see this in other Halo titles as well according to this video from Ao Zoli. I hope I'm saying that right. But, but the way that bullets magnetize and the margin of error in these games seems pretty similar to Destiny 2. Of course, Destiny 2 is probably more generous than that of the Halo series in my opinion. However, the way they magnetize does seem very similar to if we were to fire an SMG at a target or slightly off target in Destiny 2 or something like a hand cannon as well. And this of course would make sense because these fundamental systems in Halo were made by Bungie as of course the original Halo series was made by Bungie. And I can only assume that this is how they make the gunplay feel as good as it does in their games. Continuing to talk about aim assist more specifically in the Destiny series, I have a resource and a breakdown from Mer Hercules of Destiny Massive Breakdowns. He is one of the most credible Destiny PvP scientists there are in this game and still makes breakdowns. Please check out this article and this breakdown because it has a lot of really useful information on this topic and is presented very, very well. But talking about aim assist here, we can see that he says the maximum deflection a bullet can take is given by the circular part of the reticle not the crosshairs or the lines that can be seen when ADS on the mission last rites in Destiny 1. The circle increases in diameter as the aim assist stat gets larger due either to sights like sure shot at the time or barrels like smooth ballistics at the time or perks that increase aim assist like hidden hand. Again, these are things back in Destiny 1. Weapons with higher base aim assist will have larger circles than those with smaller base aim assist. 
as you fire the circle shrinks in size so your maximum aim assist deflection degrades with sustained fire. I tested this in Destiny 2 to see if it held up and I actually noticed the Jack Queen King with 96 aim assist had a larger circular part of the reticle than both the last word and Sturm. One weapon of course with higher range, one with lower, both of them with lower aim assist, with a value of 40 for the last word and 50 for Sturm. So this does mean that definitively the aim assist stat is represented by the circular part of the hand cannon reticle. So let's talk more about our hand cannon reticles because it seems that they have a lot of useful information. I believe the lines on the crosshair indicate accuracy and what's known as bloom, of course expanding after firing and returning to the initial accuracy after waiting. As I mentioned, the circle part of the reticle tells us the aim assist of the weapon and appears to, at least on controller, degrade as we fire repeatedly. This is easily seen on the last word, which has higher hip fire accuracy so the lines don't move as much, but the circle itself still degrades while shooting repeatedly indicating that while we fire repeatedly, our aim assist is lowering or degrading. With Lucky Pants' illegally modified holster perk that increases accuracy, we can see that firing repeated shots keeps the lines on the reticle tighter and they do not flare out as much as they would without the perk active. So this is a great way of just showing that accuracy is being represented in the crosshairs. So where does stability fit in now? Stability of course is how your weapons barrel and your aim moves after each shot is fired and this is the most simplest and most immediately noticeable effect of it. But stability also influences how much your aim assist degrades after each shot is fired. Higher stability will maintain aim assist after repeated shots are fired and will degrade less and will return to initial or reset faster than having low stability. However, a weapon with high range or accuracy will still be potentially inaccurate as after the first shot it will move erratically and have aim assist degrade for longer. But a high stability weapon, although the barrel doesn't move around much and it maintains aim assist better, will suffer from more variation of where bullets will spread out from across distance because of a wider accuracy cone. Let's get a little spicy now and talk about controller and mouse and keyboard. This is by no means meant to be is one better than the other, is one cheating, not about that whatsoever. Just looking at what we can observe knowing what we've now learned about how the crosshairs work and other factors. So let's see how they compare. Initially using hand cannon crosshairs, we can see the crosshair circles representing aim assist is actually much larger, which could be potentially an indication that we can somewhat assume that mouse and keyboard gets some sort of a higher degree of aim assist. While jumping, we can also see the circle on controller become very small and see no change on mouse and keyboard, which is another indicator that we can draw the same assumption for aim assist perhaps in the air. While firing hand cannons, we can see that the circle does not degrade as it does on controller, meaning we can assume that the aim assist also does not degrade or at least degrade as much while firing repeatedly as it does on controller. Using a hip fire grip on a hand cannon and firing on MNK, we can see that the crosshairs do not bloom out at all, whereas on controller, they do a little bit. Using an Icarus grip on Not Forgotten and firing in the air shows us the same effect. The lines representing accuracy do not move, whereas on controller they still bloom out. And using an Icarus grip on other hand cannons while firing in the air bloom less on MNK than controller. This means we have basis to assume or make an assumption that MNK has some sort of inherently higher accuracy, which is as we recall also a direct relation to the effectiveness of aim assist. Mouse and keyboard also appears to have inherently higher stability, which based on what we know about stability and its effect on aim assist, could inherently maintain it better as well while repeatedly firing. Of course it is known in Destiny that controller has strong reticle friction, and of course on mouse and keyboard they do not have reticle friction. It seems as though, from what I can tell, mouse and keyboard has heightened values of accuracy, aim assist, and stability three big traits that work together to make up for the lack of course of not having 
reticle friction. This could be how they balanced mouse and keyboard and controller and made them both still feel very good. Let's talk about something I like to call aim assist sweet spots. So weapons in Destiny 2 appear to have what I call aim assist sweet spots, ranges where to make them feel more effective within their optimal range, they are more forgiving. And conversely, ranges where the weapon is less forgiving to make them feel less effective. For example, shooting a hand cannon at around 10 meters and aiming at the health bar, you won't land any hits regularly. However, at 30 meters and aiming towards the health bar, you'll land shots very consistently. You can see the same with a scout rifle, firing at around 20 meters versus at around 50 meters. The scout's a lot more forgiving, aiming towards the health bar, and it lands hits regularly. Firing a hand cannon at around 50 meters at the health bar, like the scout rifle, does not have the same effect as it did at 30 meters or anything similar to the scout. It's also possible that zoom levels alter aim assist or accuracy, and it was explained to me that in Destiny 1 they did. Again, not sure with the whole thing, but it could create what I'm describing as sweet spots, not entirely sure. But I think this is how Bungie makes weapons feel more appropriate and effective within their intended ranges. So we've gone through everything, let's talk about our main important takeaways. So range, accuracy, aim assist, and stability all work together and influence each other. Enhancing each of these stats as much as possible creates consistency on weapons. Hand cannon crosshairs give us a really good amount of information on aim assist values and visualizing accuracy, which are two key hidden stats. Aim assist tests or videos showing you aiming slightly off target and one shot are unreliable because they have too much variance possible to quantify good results if you were to fire repeatedly, and test shooting one bullet are only showing initial accuracy which is already meant to have you land your first shot consistently. Mouse and keyboard appears to have an elevated level of accuracy and aim assist in comparison to controller from what I can see or assume, although controller of course gets reticle friction. This is probably, I think, done to balance the two input methods and make the game feel really good on both. Weapons also appear to have an aim assist sweet spot, as far as I can explain it, that make weapons feel good within that optimal intended range. That is everything I can explain about range, accuracy, aim assist, and stability to the best of my knowledge using much smarter people's proof than I am I am just presenting the information, explaining it as best as I can, and to the best of my knowledge and understanding. So hopefully this clears up as much as we can, of course, about how we believe these things to work, and hopefully this is helpful and has provided some good information. This breakdown and this understanding is fundamental to know and understand why I value the perks that I do on a weapon and why I go for the roles that I do. As an example, my past video talking about my stability based spare rations with slide shot and just talking about slide shot as a necessary perk and I believe that as it does increase our big stats like stability and range which of course is then impacting accuracy and aim assist. So. That's why I valued that. And there's going to be more weapons in the future to come that will require having this understanding in this video to fully understand why I value having the perks that I do on my weapons. Anyways, I've kept you guys long enough. Check me out on Twitch if you want to see more content like this as I stream pretty regularly. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.